Hey everybody, my name is Tasia and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a guide to Riley Saker. If y'all do not know, Riley Saker is my king. I love him. I swear to God, the things I would do to that man. <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> I always have a good time with all of his books. I've never rated any of his books lower than three stars, and I generally enjoy every single one of his books. And this is how you know that I actually really like him, is because authors that I even love, I tend to say that I want to read their backlist, and then I end up not doing it because I'm me. You calling me a liar? I ain't calling you a truther. I don't know mental illness or something but i just never end up reading authors backlist but riley sager i've read all of his books to date this video should be going up around the release of the house across the lake which i had the pleasure of having the arc of and reading early riley was humble and gave me an arc i think riley sager is one of the authors that really made me fall in love with thrillers and i just love his work so much so if y'all don't know riley sager is actually a pseudonym for another author so riley sager is not his actual name i know a lot of people think that riley sager as women when they pick his books up and I think it was a marketing tool to be honest for his pseudonym to be Riley Sager because a lot of people think that he's a woman I never really thought that but a lot of people I know thought Riley Sager was a woman so what I'm gonna do for this video is I'm going to first talk about each book and what each one is just about then I'm going to talk about kind of like the links that I see between his books and then I'm going to go into my personal ranking and then at the end I'm going to recommend where you should start and how I think that you should go about reading the books his first book that he came out with was Final Girls which came out in 2017. In this book we follow Quincy and there's kind of two timelines throughout this story. So Quincy 10 years prior to the present day in this book she went on a vacation with some of her college friends to this cabin and they end up all getting murdered except for her so she is the final girl of that massacre. The media kind of put these three girls in cahoots. I don't know how else to explain it but they um these three girls were all final girls including Quincy and the media kind of like talked about them together all the time and these girls kind of um, began begun talking a little bit but they never really met in person before but they definitely all knew each the media often talked about them as a group so in the present day in this book Quincy finds out that one of the other final girls was found ha to have committed suicide then the other final girl shows up on her doorstep as well and some details come about about the other final girls suicide that kind of put it into question on whether it's actually a suicide or was somebody after her and if they killed her are they after our main character Quincy now and so her and the final girl that showed up at her doorstep are kind of investigating what's going on and we also get flashbacks to um the massacre that Quincy was a part of but it it it's a big lead up it's all throughout the book starting when they're when they're traveling to the cabin when they first get to the cabin and we see the relations between her and her college friends and kind of the drama that comes with that this one I would say is a very classic slasher. Riley Sicker is known to be a really big horror fan and in this one you can definitely tell he drew a lot upon um, really classic horror slashers that kind of were the basis for the horror movie genre and it really shows throughout this novel. So his second published work which came out in 2018 was The Last Time I Lied. This book also has a dual timeline with our main character Emma and Emma in the past she was probably around 14 like a really young teenager when she goes to this camp for the first time called Camp Nightingale and she for some reason gets paired with this group of older girls that are probably like like 18 like seniors in high school. She is definitely the youngest of the group and kind of sticks out a little bit but they kind of take her underneath their wing a little bit and one night her and the other girls end up playing Two Truths and a Lie and once the game kind of ends they kind of tuck Emma into bed and the other three girls that are older than her go off and they're never seen again and they just kind of disappear. This really traumatized Emma and she never really went back to the camp and the camp actually ended up shutting down but Emma is now an artist and she kind of depicts a lot of things in her art about this girl's these girls disappearance. She's actually a really good artist and she starts getting a lot of attention and one person that she catches the attention of is actually the owner of the camp when she was a child and she decides she wants to open this camp back up. She invites Emma to kind of be like a camp counselor there where she would teach art to the children and and Emma begrudgingly does accept and while she's at this camp in present day she kind of learns more about these girls disappearances. This one is definitely I would say probably his most summary of the bunch and it really does give like the atmospheric cabin oh the sun just went away it really gives like the atmospheric cabin summer camp vibes his next book is lock every door which came out in 2019 and this was the book that really put him on the map he was definitely popular and well known with his first two books but this one is what really blew him up 
especially on booktube and this one is his most read book so we follow jules and jules recently broke up with her boyfriend because i believe he was cheating on her they live together so now she's kind of out of a home and is kind of just you know floating around when she comes across this ad to be an apartment sitter at this really famous rich um apartment building in the middle of manhattan called the bartholomew and i believe it's literally like across the street from central park this apartment complex is literally for like people who are very rich or very famous or both she applies to become this apartment sitter because they really don't like the apartments being empty and she actually gets accepted to be in this apartment center but there's some weird rules and i'll read them off it says no visitors no nights spent away from the apartment and no disturbing the other residents and so she, these rules are kind of weird but she's like whatever like this is good like she's getting paid and she gets a free place to live so she's like of course i'm gonna accept but then she becomes friends with some of these other apartment sitters as well but one of them ends up disappearing and so she's trying to look into the disappearance to figure out what happened and is kind of finding out that apartment sitters have disappeared before and how is all this connected and as i said this one is probably like his most read it's definitely not his most highly rated but i think that just comes with like the territory um of being his most read book and so some of riley saker's books do lean more speculative while his first two have no speculative elements at all this one kind of calls into question whether it is speculative or not his 2020 release was home before dark and this one is also kind of like another um not it's not a dual timeline but it has another element into the timeline we follow maggie throughout this book and maggie i would say is probably around 30 years old but when she was a child her and her family moved into this house called bainbury hall and it was very very cheap it's a big victorian home in vermont and her parents were like gonna take the deal obviously because it was a pretty cheap home but then within like 30 days her family flees from the house claiming that it's haunted and that there's like paranormal activity going there that scares them it's very much giving amityville horror and her father ends up actually writing a book about it called house of horrors and it literally talks about the amityville horror in the um synopsis saying that it kind of rivals that book in popularity maggie was very little when this occurred so she doesn't really remember and she kind of believes that her dad is just like bsing and like doesn't really believe in the book but then her father ends up dying and the house comes into her possession but she didn't even know that her family still owned this home but she decides to go up there because i believe she might be a real estate agent i'm not even sure but she decides to go up there and fix up the home and then sell it because she doesn't want it um but she can obviously get some coin out of it so when she goes back there she starts to kind of experience some things herself and is kind of wondering whether her father was actually telling the truth or not and what actually happens so we get maggie's perspective present day but then we also are reading from the um novel house of horrors that her dad wrote so it's really interesting to see that comparison and this book i would say is definitely pretty speculative specifically with the house of horrors um inserts throughout this because obviously they're claiming that there's paranormal activity in the house and so that is definitely really included in the um house of horrors aspects of this book in 2021 he came out with survive the night and this one is kind of a return back to his roots this one is very a classic thriller this one i would say kind of gives no exit vibes but this one is probably i think his most hated and no exits like one of the most loved books uh thriller books on book two and this one is one of the most hated so if you like no exit i can't promise that you'll like this one but the vibes are similar with it being like um i think it's like kind of like snowy or like bad weather and there's traveling and so it kind of gives those vibes and it's very like fast-paced quick thriller so this one is also his only one that fully takes place in the past so obviously in some of his books there's dual timeline where things take place 10 20 30 years prior but in this one the full story takes place in 1991 and we follow charlie charlie is a college student and her roommate recently was murdered by this campus killer and because of that she's obviously very traumatized and doesn't really want to be at college anymore she posts this ad on a rideshare board hoping for someone to be able to drop her home on their way to wherever they're going so someone actually responds to this and says that they can take her home because they are on their way back home anyways to help with their sick father so they begin to travel and charlie starts to question who did she really get into the car with like who is this man and is he the campus killer what's going on there but this book has a lot a lot a lot of references to horror movies and a lot of people don't like this book because it's very like 
cheesy and stuff like that. Harley also kind of dissociates from her reality so she's a very unreliable narrator and we don't know what we can necessarily believe from her and what is actually happening to her. And this book is very chock full with music and movie references of the time. And so his most recent release that's coming out in 2020 or has just come out is The House Across the Lake. We follow Casey Fletcher. She's a somewhat recently widowed actress and she's an actress on Broadway in New York and she comes from like a lineage. Her mother was also a very famous actress, even more famous than her and, and she's still alive and kicking on Broadway doing them shows. And so Casey was widowed about 14 months prior to the beginning of the story. This one also has some timeline aspects to it but it's more of like we follow her presently but then there's like flashes forward if that makes sense and they end up meeting up and the flashes forward are just like little snippets and I honestly at first was like what like what does this have to do with the story but then it really clicks into place. But current day Casey is at this lake called Lake Green where her family has this cabin that has been passed down through generations and her mother sent her there because she actually ended up going on stage drunk and getting fired from her Broadway show but 14 months prior her husband actually drowned at that same lake and that is where she basically became a widow so it's kind of triggering from her she is an extreme alcoholic and this came up basically when her husband died like that's when she started to become an alcoholic and so she's very unreliable because literally she's not sober from the majority of the book she literally starts drinking throughout the day she has like a drinking um schedule starting in the morning to like when she goes to sleep she literally has like a schedule but one day when she's on this like she ends up saving one of her new neighbors named Catherine and Catherine is a famous ex-model and she almost drowned in this lake as well but Casey ends up saving her and um, Catherine and her husband Tom are really grateful for this and Catherine and Casey end up kind of striking up a friendship um, for the next couple days but then all of a sudden Catherine goes missing and Casey kind of thinks that it's Tom because she actually found these pair of binoculars that her husband used to use to bird watch and she she ended up stalking Catherine and Tom because the house that they just bought is right across the lake from her and basically like most of the house is glass. So she would drink and end up kind of looking a little bit and stalking them and she sees some things that makes her think that it's Tom. She starts trying to investigate herself to see what really happened to Catherine. I will say that this book is his most speculative out of all of them and I don't like speculative thrillers so I wanted to tell y'all in case you also don't like them. This one is probably his most different from all of the rest of his novels in his other thrillers they're either completely real world or they just have hints of it being speculative this one is has a lot more speculative elements to it than any of his other books so just because you liked his other books does not mean that you are necessarily going to like this one because it is fairly different in that way so what's really interesting to me is that he kind of has eras where he has like two books that kind of have elements that are very similar so his first two final girls and the last time I lied obviously they look very similar they have a woman in the background and in this one you can see her face this one you can't but the text is very 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 similar and it's completely one color over the whole cover with the text matching and there's like slashes so in final girls it's all the eyes and then the last time I lied there's just some up in the cover and what I find interesting about these is that they are both taking place at cabins and kind of have like those cabin vibes and these ones kind of reminisce the most of like a horror movie like an actual horror movie um, at a summer camp which is a very classic trope in horror movies or even just like at a cabin with a massacre those are both very classic horror movie tropes so I find it really interesting that both those ha kind of have those things and even in the last time I lied she's still kind of like the final girl of that group because she's the only one who is still around the other girls maybe they're alive but they're not known to be so I find it really interesting that both these books kind of have final girls elements so his next era lock every door and home before dark these covers are also very similar the text is pretty similar to the, his first two books but this text in both of these are a bit thicker and it still has like that completely um, basically like one color all over the whole cover but this one the element in the background changes so it both changes to elements of the places so which shows that in the first two books the emphasis is really on the characters while in this one it's really focused on the place so in lock every door you can see the doors and a woman walking away and then in home before dark there is a picture of a chandelier which shows again that there's a bigger emphasis on the location in these two stories and this is kind of like his gothic era he really focuses on like an old victorian home and then a big um, apartment complex that's very old these two definitely go together with their locations 
So his last era currently published today is Survive the Nights and The House Across the Lake. And these two are seemingly two of his most different books. This one's a very classic real life world thriller while his other one is kind of like a domestic thriller with speculative twists. And so I would say they're not very very similar but the covers are. So again it calls into question this era aspect but you can see both covers are pretty like dark with a little bit of like a color in the middle but they're fairly dark with a very bright text and they both have a light in the middle of the cover. This one, it's the headlights of the car that they're traveling in, and in the house across the lake, it's the lights of the windows that, you know, our main character Casey is peering through. So I find it really interesting and clever, his covers. Like, his covers really, really go with the books if you think about it. The connection between these two eras is these two really have his most unreliable narrators. You never really know if what the narrators are saying are tr is true and if what's going on is actually what's going on because of something. I would say the last time I lied, narrator's a little bit unreliable, but nothing compared to these two. These two characters, Charlie and Casey, ridiculously unreliable. Like you cannot trust a word that they say. It's actually insane. So that's really the connection I see between these two. I feel like literally like a Riley Sager theorist. Like I'm like, what is the next era gonna be? Like, let me start theorizing about what the connection's gonna be now. Like I just need to see the first cover. I wanna see the first cover and then I'm gonna start theorizing, okay? So um, I'm going to now go into my personal ranking. So my absolute favorite Riley Sager book to date is Home Before Dark. I love this book so much, which is crazy because again, I do not like speculative thrillers. And this one and The House Across the Lake are his most speculative, but something about this with the book with in a book really, really worked for me. And I think this just goes to show that Riley Sager is so masterful in his craft because he literally someone who doesn't even like speculative elements at all likes this. Like normally anything kind of speculative is going to turn me off instantaneously but something about this really works for me like even like speculative or paranormal movies like horror movies i don't really like like the conjuring i thought was going to scare me really bad but it literally didn't i would say this one out of all of his books scared me the most like i was like on the edge of my seats for sure and it definitely like really it really scared me a little bit because I didn't know what was going on and I love the end. I know some people are not a big fan but this is actually his most highly rated book across the board. It is one of his most read as well but it is his most highly rated. I believe it has over a 4.0 on Goodreads which is kind of insane for a thriller because thrillers are really divisive in general but I love this book so much and I just love the end. I love how everything tied together and he just makes his books make sense. He, throughout throughout 70% of the book you're gonna be like what in the world like what is going on but then at the end like everything ties together so perfectly like the math maths okay like it's not like he's just leaving you in the dust and like putting a random twist in there that doesn't line up with the rest of the story everything makes sense and it just seems so obvious once he says it that you're just like what? I love the house of horrors aspect of this book and I feel like a lot of times book within books don't always work for me because I get bored of the book within the book aspect like the little inserts but this one was so interesting and fascinating and I just loved it and the atmosphere was fantastic. My second favorite was The Last Time I Lied. I think this one really just set itself really high up because this one literally ends on a twist like the last couple pages is a twist and you're just like you're left reeling. I was like he did not just do that like it literally ends right on a twist but I just love the atmosphere I love like the summer camp vibes and I really thought it was so interesting that these girls were disappearing and it felt very reminiscent again of horror movies which I absolutely love I love horror movies so much so I really just love that aspect so much and I believe I really liked our main character as well I really thought it was interesting how she was an artist in this and how that played in to the story it actually kind of made sense and so I really found that fascinating and I just love again the location that this takes place at the summer camp I thought it was really fun and I really liked it both these books are like a 4.5 5 star for me in that general area basically like both these would round up to five stars regardless so uh, my next favorite by him is actually the house across the lake which again i think shows how good he is at his craft because someone who doesn't enjoy speculative thrillers enjoyed a really really speculative thriller i really thought this was so fun like i just didn't know where it was going i did hear it was speculative before i started it from people who read it even before me even though i got an arc so i knew that going in and i think that was very good because if i did it i think i would have maybe not liked it as much but the fact that I knew really helped me because 
I could mentally prepare for it going to have aspects that I wouldn't traditionally like and to be more open-minded about them. And I really liked our main character in this and I think that's controversial. I don't think a lot of people are going to like her and I don't think a lot of people are going to like this book. I think this one and Survive the Night are going to be his most hated but I don't know something about this one just work. He makes everything click into place so perfectly that it's ridiculous. Like all these puzzle pieces and you're just like what is he doing? And then he just clicks them into place and I'm just like oh my god like he really is just such a genius and and this one i feel like is a very classic like domestic thriller but with riley sacred twists all throughout it and i just loved it it was so fun i gave this one four stars and i think it's one that's going to stay in my mind for a while especially because i read this one completely physically i don't really remember which of these i've read completely physically but that one i did and so i feel like it's more imprinted in my brain but i also really liked her being an actress on broadway I thought that was really fascinating and how um catherine and tom are actually both famous as well and i also really like the side character in this there are a couple side characters i can think of like three that i really enjoyed and i also thought the end was like it's kind of sweet some of his books he really wraps up in a nice bow other ones not so much but this one he really did and i enjoy it my fourth favorite of his which i also gave five stars to is survive the night and this is controversial because not a lot of people like this i only know a couple people i know Haley likes this book i know gwen likes this book but that's it really i think there's like a couple other people but not many people like this book a lot of people hate this book oh and beth recently read this and she enjoyed it as well but i don't know this one was just like so classic like especially because it takes place in the 90s i really like those vibes um but this one i think a lot of people do not like because they are not understanding the depth of the horror references that he's making in here that is like almost a direct quote from Haley. so credit where credit is due but i think that's so true Haley has watched way more horror movies than me but i also really enjoy horror movies and you can just see his references all throughout this book and references to just pop culture of the time in the 90s and i really enjoyed it and i think a lot of people are just it's flying past their heads i think a lot of people think that the main character in this is annoying so i think that that's gonna ha also happen with alice across the lake because she's unreliable but i think they're just flawed characters and i didn't really mind her too much to be honest and and a lot of people complain like why would you do this 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 and this but again this takes place in the 90s we don't really know about like safety and stuff like that as much i mean not me talking like i was in the 90s but you know things have even developed since i've been a kid um where we talk about safety way more and everything like that and also like you don't know what you would do in these situations like people who are complaining that she's been doing stupid things and making stupid decisions would probably make very similar decisions because when you get into those situations you kind of just freeze up you don't know what to do because you've never been in that type of situation before so i don't really blame the main character at all and the twist in this at the end was so obvious but I didn't see it. It had me quaking. I think a lot of people also don't like this book because I would say it's probably his most predictable of the bunch. Again, I didn't see it, but there's only so many options. So I can see why people wouldn't like it because of this, but I thought it was really fun and I had a good time reading it. My fifth favorite coming in at 3.5 stars is Final Girls. This one is actually one of his ones that I read the most recently, but you can definitely tell it's his first work. His writing is less developed um, and the end was okay. I really just did not feel connected to the characters at all because at least in his other books they a lot of times are very flawed but that makes them stand out in my head this one the characters are very forgettable and i honestly um didn't really care as much but i still had a fantastic time i really wish most more of this book took place during like the actual massacre bits that's like really i think what would have put this over the edge for me is if this book had more like the massacre pieces in this i would have enjoyed it way more but i still had a good time and i still loved those pieces just the other timeline wasn't my favorite but like literally the massacre was like five out of five and the other bits were like 2.5 so i just kind of made it a 3.5 so i still had a really good time but it wasn't my favorite and you could definitely tell he's not laying out things as well as his other books because it is his first book and my last favorite coming in at three stars is lock every door i've actually met a lot of people recently who have this as their least favorite book of his so i feel less alone but this is my least favorite book i don't know necessarily why i was having an okay time reading it but the end i they tease this ending and then the ending actually doesn't end up being that ending and i didn't like that because i like the other ending i liked the actual ending as well but it made me upset that 
the ending that they teased was not the actual ending and I didn't like that so that was really what put me over the edge and especially because everybody loves this book so much like this is the most talked about one everybody loves lock every door so the fact that everybody loved it so much just made me dislike it even more I get I still had a good time and you can really see in here this is where he really starts laying out the pieces very well you can definitely start to see it in the last time I lied as well, but this one, this is where he really starts to become like a genius. You can definitely see that so I can appreciate this book. I can appreciate it, what it did, but it's definitely not my favorite of his. I still look at it fondly because it's Riley Sager. I don't think I'll ever give any of his books less than three stars, but it is definitely my least favorites because the end, and I just, I like the gothic elements, but um, I don't know. It just isn't my favorite. So getting into where you should start if you have not read any Riley Sager, I know a lot of people say to start in publication order because you could definitely see grow as a writer over time and Final Girls is probably one of his weakest writing wise but I would say actually not to do that because I think that if you start with Final Girls and you think it's just okay then you won't pick up the rest of his books and I think that's kind of a tragedy if you don't. So Final Girls I definitely did not read it first. I think it was my fourth or fifth book that I read from him and so again i i just don't think it's like the best place to start because it's not his best work and if you don't like it or just think that it's okay i don't think you'll be persuaded to pick up the rest of his work so i have a couple different starting places that i think you should start depending on what you like in thrillers generally if you really do love speculative thrillers in general i would say the house across the lake is probably the best for that but i again i don't think that this one's going to be widely loved because of the main character and it being so different but if you've never read a riley sacred before and you like speculative elements then i would recommend picking this one up or home before dark this one has a lot of speculative elements in it as well with the um book within the book so if you like that maybe this one and then go into the house across the lake because either one's probably going to give you that fix if you like also paranormal horror movies i would recommend this one if you like things like the conjuring or anything like that i would recommend this one because of the house of horrors elements within this book but if you like more classic slasher horror movies i would kind of recommend final girls i know i said that this was not the best place to start but i feel like this one is very very um, reminiscent of classic slasher movies so if you think that nostalgia is going to make you really like this book i would recommend this one or even survive the nights this one again if you like more thriller movies i think you will like the pace of this one and the plot but this one has a lot of horror movie references throughout it so if you are like a horror movie um expert i think that this one could be really fun for you to pick up on all the different elements that he's throwing into the story so i think this one could be a really good place to start even though again it's his most hated i would not necessarily recommend these two or the house cross lake to a general audience as a starting point but i think that these could be really fun if you again like these certain elements within your thrillers or horrors or if you like just those elements outside of books. I would probably say one of his best places to start is either Lock Every Door or The Last Time I Lied. I'd probably say 70% of you should probably start with one of these, 20% um, Home Before Dark and the other 10% probably one of the other three. These two are probably his most widely loved. Home Before Dark is as well but I don't know. I feel like these ones would probably be a good place to start. If you want gothic elements I would say Lock Every Door and The Last Time I Lied is really interesting with the missing disappearances so if you like disappearances in your thrillers generally and like figuring out where girls went missing that's a very common trope i would definitely recommend this one these two are a little bit slower of his but they build really really well and i think these two are probably like his most classic thrillers within the modern thriller genre today i feel like these ones are definitely more reminiscent of modern thrillers so if you read thrillers a lot or if you really enjoy classic thrillers i would definitely recommend these two because i feel like you're not probably going to guess what's going on even if you're a seasoned thriller lover but they're very reminiscent of what we already read and love so that is my guide to riley sager i could gush about him all day i love his work so much i'm hoping to do a couple more of these coming up but thank you all so much for watching leave a house emoji down below if you made it to the end of this video for the house across the lake to celebrate his new release i would really appreciate it if you give this a like and tell me what you your favorite Riley Sager book is down below if you read any of his books. And that's all that I have for this video today, and I'll see y'all in my next one. Bye, everybody. Bitches, trying to look like you winning. I'm writing rhymes in the kitchen, soaking in moments we live in. Yeah, you got the nerve to be on me, faking your life for the IG. If you got my number, don't add me, cause baby, I'm